Hi, today I'm going to do a VR 2D tag all about Tarot 2022. It's a VR to the Hermit's Cave. If it looks like I've been crying, I promise you I have not. I just, as soon as I press record, it, record I had to yawn, so... <laughs> I don't know. I'm also not wearing any makeup because I'm trying to not wear as much makeup on camera anymore. Anyway, let's roll with the questions. The first question is your first deck and how you encountered it. My first deck, I don't have the original box for it anymore, but uh, this is the Modern Witch Tarot. And I encountered it because as soon as I was interested in tarot and I have talked about my journey to tarot um, in another uh, VR that I'll link somewhere in the eye up above as well as in the description box. But I googled good beginner decks, good tarot beginner decks, and the Modern Witch Tarot was one that I saw all the time. And I really liked that the images are more modern looking, the line work and everything is way sharper than the original RWS. That is why I decided to get this. I still love the imagery and I have slowly been get getting back into this deck, even though I was pretty sure I was going to declutter it just because the deck is so freaking thick. It is a little bit of a struggle to shuffle it. And I like to work with uh, jumper cards, but I get so many jumper cards with this because it's so thick and tough to shuffle. I don't know if they're gonna make this in a better card stock. Uh, I know there's a German and a French version. I don't wanna get that. I, I just, I want an English version with better card stock. That is the first tarot deck that I ever got. And let's compare that to the previous deck that I got. And Okay, so I personally purchased at the same time both a tarot and an oracle. So I have the Star Codes Astro, which was my recent oracle purchase, my most recent oracle purchase, and the Wandering Star Tarot as my most recent tarot purchase. So let's take a look at how it is different and how my tastes have changed. Changed. <laughs> so I still love colors in my decks, okay? I still love colors. I still like, um, I don't know, diversity. There is diversity, at, at least ethnical and like gender um, diversity in these decks. And that is something that I really like. I like that the, this has bolder colors, um, as does the modern witch tarot. So I feel like in that regard, it's very much the same. This one is a way better shuffler, though. I do think that this deck, the Wandering Star Tarot, when I do readings, uh, it, it tends to go a little bit more to the spiritual side, where the modern witch tarot tends to lean more toward the, towards the practical side, but that is because I somewhat personif personify my decks. However, they're the decks that I most recently got, I didn't purchase, but I got gifted by one of my channel members, which I really, really appreciate. And those decks are the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot and the Prism Oracle. So since we're talking about tarot, I'm going to show the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot. This was on my Amazon wish list, and she got it for me. I also decided to edge it black because look at that. It looks so amazing. So... And this one is really different because this one is way darker, but this is totally different from my usual aesthetics because my usual aesthetics is very light and airy. And I did an entire video on what my tarot aesthetics are. And this is sort of the opposite on, of that, but that is also what I really, really enjoy about it. So yeah, the, the, <laughs> the intuitive night goddess tarot and the modern witch tarot, totally different. I mean, I, I guess they're somewhat modern both, but that is because I only, I still only like modern decks. I don't, I don't know. It, it just is. I, I just do. Question three is why tarot? And honestly, it, I, I, like I said, I told you my journey into tarot in another video and the reason that it has sort of stuck is because it all rings true to me. I have yet to do a reading that doesn't resonate with me or with anybody else that I specifically did a reading for. My pick a card readings, uh, especially the ones that I have on friendship, they get viewed a lot and I get a lot of comments from people that really resonate with the readings. So why tarot? It's because it is validating. 
And um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more at the end, like with the last question. But overall, why tarot? Because it's it validates me. It validates who I am, who how I think. It validates me in my decisions, my decision making. And that is what why I think I have grown so much since I started doing tarot almost two years ago. I've grown so much, uh, mostly, I think, in confidence because... For some reason, like my tarot journal journey has really been focused on self-love, self-worth. And I definitely feel like I have grown in both in like self-empowerment and in confidence. And that is what I really enjoy doing on this channel as well to empower other people and to, I don't know, empower them in their lives and in their decisions. For tarot pet peeves, I have quite a few, but those are more like actual ethical things. So I don't know if they're necessarily pet peeves, but they are just some moral dilemmas, moral and ethical things that I see. Um, for one, one thing, uh, as an example, is buying fake decks knowing that they are fake. Because I have purchased fake decks on Wish before. That was before I totally understood what Wish was all about. And then I learned about all the shit that goes behind that and I decided to no longer purchase from that there. However, I feel like now it is very known that it's not great and not really ethical to purchase anything from Wish and to knowingly purchase decks from Wish. Um, no, first of all, knowing that they're fake, knowing that the creator of the deck doesn't get any money. That was was the part that I did not know about Wish. But the creator of the deck does not get money, does not get compensated when you purchase a fake deck, which is why I don't like it. The only, um, how do I want to say this? The only exception to the rule, I guess, is for those who genuinely do not have the money to purchase a regular tarot deck in in that case only but but that is that is not always the case with those who purchase fake decks so it's like one of my pet peeves is just that when people like purchase fake decks to try a deck out or something like I don't know I don't like it if you do that this is not an, an attack on you I just it does not sit right with me morally, ethically. I don't like it. Another thing that I don't like with tarot specifically has to do with the thought because, and there's an, a whole conversation to be had. And I've said this a million times before that I want to make a video on separating the art from the artist. I personally have decided to not read with at least the original thought. And that is, I, I don't think that the deck is evil or anything. I think the creator was sort of evil, Alistair Crowley. I do not like that. However, I understand the concept b between separating uh, the thought from Alistair Crowley and, and vice versa. I understand that. However, what, what, what one of my pet peeves is, is when people say that he was a product of his time. I hate that. Or saying that, oh no, he was just an edgelord. No, 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 no. He was disgusting. He was a scumbag. And you can still say, I just appreciate his work, but I still detest him as a, a human being. Like, you can say both of those things and it, 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 it is okay for someone to work with the thought. I don't think someone is a bad person for working with the thought. I, I also don't think that someone who works with the thought constantly has to say that they don't agree with Crowley. Like, duh, I get, I get it. However, sort of excusing Crowley for your, you to excuse you with the thought, I, I don't like that. I don't know if I'm... Um, explaining myself correctly, I feel like there's a, a little bit of a language barrier here. But the overall summary of this is you can absolutely work with the thought, um, even if you don't like Crowley. Personally, for me, I don't even connect with the original thought imagery. There, it's, it's not for me. That is just separate from Crowley as an individual. Um, but yeah. Um, and I, I guess the third one is cultural appropriation in tarot and mostly in, I, I see it mostly in oracles. And uh, I talked about this in another, in another video and I got, got pretty heated in the comment section. However, I still think I'm right. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I am right about cultural appropriation and that being uh, a big problem in the tarot swear 
community, eh, but mostly the companies creating the um, the decks. And I definitely want to do an entire like docu video on what cultural appropriation is because I have a lot of thoughts. I want to do the research. I want to bring in people who it affects um, for the video. So that is my... Um, a little project that I'm thinking of um, right now. It's just a, a brain child, but I uh, I want to bring it into reality. Number five, my favorite tarot spread. I love doing very simple like two card spreads. I love that. Um, and I have an entire video on like two card spreads or three card spreads. I have a free ebook where I have a couple of spreads and I like those as well. Um, I like the one from Katie Flowers, the Going Well Do Better. I really like that. That is one of my favorites because you can use it for just a regular uh, general check-in. But you can also use it for what is going well or what can I do better in my career, my love life and my friendship. So I like it. Sometimes I like it uh, as an add-on to a reading that I'm already doing. But sometimes I just, I, I don't know what to do a reading on. And then I'm like, oh, well, what, what is going well and where can I do better? I feel like it's such a great um, little spread to fall back on. And then what comes out of that, I can then ask more questions on and pull more cards for. For my podcast, I really have been enjoying the energy for the week, blessings for the week and challenges for the week. So that is one that I've been falling back on. And I do sort of the same for like monthly readings, that sort of stuff and deck interviews. I really like deck, deck interviews. And I did an entire video on how I do a deck interview as well. Number six, your preferred tarot system. I am 100% an RWS girly. Uh, it's, it's just what I learned on. And like I said, the thought doesn't really intrigue me, doesn't really interest me. Marseille, not so much either. I'm pretty sure the only Marseille deck that I have is the uh, tattoo tarot and that is I, I don't know if it's Marseille or just Pip or if, if there's a correlation between the two like I, I don't know I'm just I'm an RWS girly and I love RWS so again separating the art from the artist I know uh, Ryder Waite wasn't particularly a saint either so seven tarot rituals I don't know if I really have any rituals I do like mostly I can do a tarot reading whenever, um, but I like taking a little bit of time for it. Um, sometimes I like to listen to just calming music. I'll just type into YouTube meditative music or uh, lo-fi. I like um, reading tarot with lo-fi in my ears. That is when I do it for myself. I guess a little bit of a ritual. I don't have them here, but I usually have two crystals with me. I have a piece of uh, rainbow fluorite which helps with focus and concentration and thinking, clear thinking. And then um, amethyst as well for the connection with my uh, intuition, connection to the universe. So that is the, th those are the two crystals that I pretty much always have next to me when I do a reading. And I don't know, I just, I sort of got into the habit of doing that. I don't have to light incense. I don't have to say a little prayer. Um, one, one thing that I do um, is when I did, when I have worked with reversals with the deck, at the end of the reading, I'll take all of the reversals out and then I shuffle in new reversals for a new reading. So that is sort of how I work with reversals if I decide to work with reversals for a reading. Eight, how do you use tarot, introspection or divination? I think I use it a little bit for both, but I mostly I use it for introspection just because I feel like it is a great tool for it. Like I said, I have worked with the tarot to help improve my feeling of self-love, my self-empowerment, all that sort of stuff. And it just works really well for it. And that is how I like to use it for other people as well. When I do readings for other people. Nine, your significator card and why you think it. Nine, your significator card and why you think it represents you. So I have a couple of options here. Because first of all, um, I think most people take a court card or maybe a major arcana card for their significator card. I have court cards. So the one that... 
astrologically aligns with me. I'm a Leo sun. So we have fixed fire. That would be the king of wands. So this is my like astrological sig significa sig wait, what? significator card. Okay. Again, Angl English, not my first language. And I mean, I guess I sort of seem, that, that is what I sort of strive to be. However, I definitely like a few, I'm more of a queen of wands, which makes a little bit of sense. This corresponds with the zodiac sign of Aries and I do have an Aries moon. So I feel like I am, um, I, I, I am a little bit of a combination of the two. I definitely see myself as having the potential of being like an inspirational leader. Um, but I feel like I just have more of that feminine energy of the queen. Another court card that I associate with myself sometimes or that I like to see pop up in a reading that makes me feel like I'm on the right path, that is the queen of pentacles. Um, I am a vegan. I have been vegan for about seven years. I don't necessarily see the queen of pentacles as a vegan card. However, especially in this one, you just see her connected to nature and connected with the little bunny, which to me is a big symbol within uh, veganism. So I don't know, whenever I just, I smile whenever the queen of pentacles comes up in a reading uh, for myself. Uh, also because one of the earlier keywords that I learned for the queen of pentacles is self-worth and knowing what you are worth. And that is something that has really stuck with me. So um, especially the Queen of Wands and the Queen of Pentacles, those are the ones that I um, feel most represented in. Um, however, I do see parts of the King of Wands within me as well, as well as the Queen of Cups, I guess. The Queen of Cups, no, the Empress card is a card that often comes up when I do career readings because I'm a teacher. And whenever I feel like what uh, energy do I need to embody for today or for this job? Um, I have gotten the Empress card a lot for that as well. 10, your most expensive tarot acquisition. I don't remember exactly, but it's either one of these decks. So this is the Little Wizards Tarot from Push Kitty. This one was about 70 euros. Then I had to pay about 20 or 30 euros in shipping and... I am pretty sure I had to pay customs for this. I think I did. So this one was about 100 euros and this is a Harry Potter inspired deck. I love this. I love this so much. I have talked about this a lot of times. The um, bend and the shuffle on these cards is absolutely amazing. And the other one that was really expensive as well, this also cost me a little over a hundred euros. So I think this one was just a bit more expensive. And this is the Afro Avatar Tarot. So these are like my two fandom decks and they're both indie purchases. Uh, Push, the one, the Harry Potter one from Push Kitty is from her website, pushkitty.com. And this I got from Etsy. This is by Colored Afros. I think her name is Nadia and, or Nidia. I think it's either one of those. I think it's Nidia and her art is so gorgeous. And unfortunately right now, this deck is not for sale, but this is so gorgeous. The cardstock is not the best, but it is very easy to, uh, to shuffle and it has become uh, more easy to shuffle over time. So that is one of my most expensive purchases or two of my most expensive purchases. And I do not regret it. I'm thinking of like, I don't even have that many indie decks. Other indie decks that I have, I have the uh, Tarot, but that one wasn't crazy expensive. I have the Wake Me Up Tarot, which only cost me like 55 euros um, for the deck and shipping, not counting customs though. And I had the Tarot Renard as an indie deck, which came from France, so that wasn't too expensive either. 11 Unicorn deck, the deck that is so hard to find. There aren't currently any decks that are, uh, it's like presumably like indie decks. There aren't really any decks that I really want to have that I couldn't get. One that has intrigued me is the Fantastic Menagerie or Menagerie. Uh, tarot. It's not really one that I need per se. Like I am not heartbroken that I cannot get it. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a unicorn deck right now. I am trying to come with to terms with the collection that I currently have because I, I have quite a few decks 
and um, I want to declutter some more. I want to really take a good look at my collection, what I have, what I use, what I need and um, to sort of go uh, go from there. 12, what is the most important lesson tarot has taught you? I think one of the most valuable things it has taught me is self-empowerment and knowing that I have full, that, that I am in charge of my own decisions, that uh, I am allowed to be confident, I am allowed to feel good about myself, I am allowed to realize and say out loud what I'm good at and to go after my dreams and to not be afraid to take a little bit of a risk. Um, Again, one of the things that I love so much about tarot is that I feel like it's very validating because usually what I have found is tarot doesn't really give you incredibly like new insights. It just sort of validates the one that you already had. Like usually when I have noticed when I go to tarot, especially for introspection, then the tarot just validates and and, um, yeah, validates what you already have in your head. And that, I don't know, feels incredibly reassuring. And I I like that. I appreciate that. And that is one of the things that tarot has taught me that even though I love to use tarot when it comes to decision making, I don't need it. I don't need tarot to make my decisions for me because somewhere in my brain, the answer is already there. Tarot just sort of helps it come to light more because when I pull the cards and I see what cards I pull, oftentimes I smile because it's like, damn it, I knew it. I knew it. I know what that means. I should have known. You know, it's it's that. And I love that about tarot. So I'm going to end it on that note. So... Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel. I post a lot of tarot chats, pick a card readings, all that fun stuff. You can also join the membership if you want to get access to the video version of my podcast, as well as our private Discord server, which has been really fun. So definitely join. You can do so for $1.99 a month. And you can book a private tarot reading with me through my Etsy or my Ko-fi shop. For now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.